What's up guys, it's Chad with Living the Van Life up here in Washington and I'd like to welcome you to another installment of the 2020 Living the Van Life Sprinter Van Build Series. And today we're going to jump into wrapping up some wiring, getting it secured so that we can move on and work on installing some insulation and get this thing outfitted for some cold winter camping. Welcome aboard the adventure guys. Now the wiring is a lot of detailed intricate work so I'm not going to film a lot of the wiring but once I'm done I'll kind of do a walkthrough with the bare wires out and kind of explain a little bit of what I did the materials that I used and where I placed some of the things so I'm just going to touch on that I'm not going to get into a lot of detail of how I'm actually wiring all this up because it's just a lot of detailed work okay so here I am at the rear of the van on the driver's side just behind the rear wheel well here. This has kind of been the central location for where all my wiring is going to start. On this side of the van, on the driver's side over the rear wheel well, is where the Battleborn battery bank is going to sit. And then that is going to power all of the Victron energy equipment, which will all be mounted here. So I've planned all my wiring based around this system and this location. Which means what I've done is I've taken all of my wires and I've plumbed them to this location. And then from here, it goes out through the walls, through all the channeling and the structure of the walls and out to the various locations where I'm going to have all the different switches, charging stations, accessories, lights, whatever it may be. Basically what happens is it takes a lot of sitting, a lot of thinking, a lot of looking at other van builds and thinking about where you want things because right now is the chance to run all of the wiring inside the walls to get to all those components. And that is all started right here. As you can see, all of these green tags on here is where I make notes of what these wires are for so that when I find the wire at the other end, it might be the complete opposite end of the van, I can see what wire goes for which accessory that way I can make the proper connections on the other end so again right here at the back this is the main power distribution location and as we flip around over here to the passenger side you can see I've got more wires coming out let's say for instance this right here this is the power that's going to be going to my hot water heater that's going to be sitting above my water tank. That's going to be over the passenger side wheel well. So I've got wiring plumbed for that. As another example, this is the wiring that is going to be powering my garage lights, which will be on each side of the garage space here underneath the bed. That is all going to be controlled by a switch that's here on the wall. So that means I've also plumbed the wiring for the switching and the garage lighting all right here so like i said it's a it's a lot of planning it's a lot of deciding where you want things ahead of time it's far easier to run the wires before putting in insulation so here i am at the passenger side and again this is another location where there is a lot of wires coming through because this is going to be one of the main stations here inside the van because right here in this area is going to be where the galley is i'm going to have a sink here an open countertop here so that I can do food prep and perhaps even some cooking on a portable countertop induction stove unit and so all of the wiring for that is here stuff like having a 120 volt outlet here at the kitchen area also all of the lighting controls for my ceiling lights are going to be here so that I can access them through the slider door I can turn ceiling lights on and off I'll also be able to dim them from this location. So a lot of wiring here. And again, you can see all of the green tags here. This tells me where this wire is coming from and what it goes to so that I can remain organized throughout my build here. This right here is six gauge wiring, both a positive and a negative. This comes directly from the battery bank at the back driver side area. And this is going to power a fuse block here so that I essentially have power distribution here and then I can go out for smaller accessories from this side of the van. Over here on the driver's side of the van, on the cabinets up above that will be running the full length of the cabin area here, I'm going to have a control monitor location put here. So one of the cabinets will have my battery monitor system set up here so that I can mon monitor 
what my batteries are doing, where my charge is at, how much solar is coming in, etc. That'll all happen here. Also, I will have all of my 120 volt switches and breakers installed right here so that I can control which 120 outlets have power to them. Um, and then other things like LED light boxes and power sources will be here in this location. So there again, more wires coming out to here. As you can see, I've got them labeled of what's what. So I also wanted to talk a little bit about the actual wiring that we're using here inside the van. This particular one right here is a two wire. It's 12 gauge. You can see it is also encased here in this heavy duty gray rubber sheathing. That helps really make this an industrial use wire. In fact, they install this on commercial semi trucks. So it's super heavy duty, 12 gauge, decent size. But to take things one step further, I've also covered this wire in expandable sleeving. It comes in a roll. Basically it expands. You can run your wire down the middle and then as you pull tight, it actually grips around the wire. And this stuff is super, super durable. And this adds one extra level of protection when it comes to any sort of rubbing or chafing that may occur while this wire is inside the van and rattling down the road. You can see here's another piece of wire and this stuff just works really well and really helps protect your wires. This is also a lot of the other wires that I used here in the van. This is a 16 gauge wire. It's a red and black so it makes it nice and easy to follow negative and positive. And I've used a lot of this ran through the van. And again also covered this in the expandable sheathing. This is where you can see all of that expandable sleeving across all the wires. And I really, really like the fact that all of this wiring is made that much more bulletproof and strong as it moves through all of these channels here inside the van. So dealing with the wiring inside of a brand new Sprinter van and laying it out can be quite tedious, just like your life insurance can be. But it doesn't actually have to be because the sponsor of today's video, Policy Genius, is here to make finding life insurance easier. If you've got a family that depends on your income, then you need life insurance. It's that simple. So why is buying it so complicated? Policy Genius asked themselves that question. Then, well, they started a company and reinvented the process from start to finish. You can save 50% or more on life insurance by comparing quotes with Policy Genius. Now, Policy Genius is an insurance marketplace. It's not actually an insurance company. With Policy Genius, you can easily apply online and compare your quotes all in one place. You could save $1,300 or more per year by using Policy Genius to compare your life insurance policies. And that right there means putting more cash towards the things that you really care about like maybe adventuring in a van or building a van, whatever it may be. The Policy Genius team handles the paperwork, scheduling, and negotiating with the insurance company on your behalf for free. Visit policygenius.com forward slash living the van life to shop the market and start saving today. With that being said, we're gonna jump back in the van and start finalizing the wiring on the ceiling lights so that we can then jump into doing some insulation. I think at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on some of the wiring for the lights and the fans, get that stuff done up on the roof so that then I can go ahead and start doing some insulation on the roof and just start making progress and get this thing done. I'm going to install a bank of lights towards the front of the van and then I'll install a separate bank that'll be over the bed. Those will be on two different switches so that I can control those individually. I'm also going to install dimmer switches on these so that I can control that as well. So I'm just gonna dig in and start running wires uh, through my different spots here so that I can check that off of my list.
Got the wiring all complete here on the ceiling here inside the Sprinter van. I'm gonna have 12 LED puck lights all the way from the front to the back and two banks separately controlled. One is gonna be over the bed and one is gonna be over the forward living area. I've got everything secured down with zip ties and everything should be in place. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting out some insulation that I'm gonna start hanging on the walls and the ceilings. Now this is going to be the last step before we start putting wall panels in. That means things are definitely getting close. Right here behind me on the table, this is where I've got the 3M Thinsulate. This is the SML 600, which has a R value of somewhere between five and six. Gonna cut these pieces out and get them fitted up here in the ceiling of the van. We're gonna start there and see how this process goes. It is now 7.30 a.m. Been going at it all night. This marks 169.75 hours in the last 11 days straight. I am freaking tired. It has most certainly been a load of work getting this far in the Sprinter van build. But to be honest with you, it's been extremely fulfilling because being able to use my own two hands to build the heart and soul into this van, that right there is very, very rewarding. But nonetheless, guys, if you have made it this far into this video, I'd like to go ahead and take this opportunity to invite you to subscribe and become part of the channel. If you do hit that subscribe button, make sure and hit the little bell next to the subscribe button because that is what's going to notify you anytime videos like this are uploaded. Most importantly, make sure and hit the like button, leave a comment in the comment section down below, and stay tuned for more Sprinter Van build videos coming your way very, very soon. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Peace out. Keep on trucking.